this old friend of mine, Helen. My best friend. My friend Colin invited me to try Alpha. Y recuerdo que mi papá me dijo, mira, hay comida gratis, ve. They handed me a invitation. It was just a random invitation. And I said like, why not, why not, let's try it. Why not, let's go. And I found like a, like a really awesome community of people. They helped me find who I was just by listening. Alpha helped me in the knowing of God. Empecé a entender que el amor es de muchas maneras. I just knew. I was a different person from that moment on. I knew I had purpose. I, I felt really comfortable and like starting to invite my friends. I've seen Alpha really impact people that I work with. I would definitely encourage people to get involved. It's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. It all turned out to be life changing. Well, we've probably all heard the cliche phrase, Jesus is all we need, but is he really? Hey, everybody, welcome to SJC's online worship experience. So excited you're with us today. If you're new, if it's your first time, I want to welcome you. You're in the right spot. And today we continue our message series in the book of Philippians. It's called Joy, Inc., Joy Incorporated. And we're going to look at Philippians chapter 3 today. Some powerful words from Paul the Apostle. It's going to be an incredible time of prayer, worship, time in God's Word. So let's get ready to do it, everybody. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over our coming and going, both now and forevermore. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye. Praise 
God, when face to face we see, the one who died and set us free, the one who rose in God from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh, for it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh, even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I've come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, 
the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may retain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or have already reached this goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward with what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Well, hey, everybody, you know, being a pastor brings with it so many interesting reactions and responses when you're out and about, especially when you're outside of church-related settings. When people find out you're in the ministry, they often turn the volume of their personality down to the point of mute so as not to offend. Or sometimes it's just the opposite. They turn it up as to uh, provoke a reaction of some kind. Some people become even visibly agitated, avoiding you altogether, while others are drawn in fascination, often confessing, quote unquote, their present spiritual temperature by including a list of their religious prouds and sorries, if you know what I mean. Almost like a ledger of credits and debits to their imaginary tab with God. Things like, I haven't always done the right things and I've done some things that I know are wrong, but I'm a good person. This is always the prevailing disclaimer, the claim of goodness. Goodness far outweighing our badness, mind you, which forms the basis of a perceived righteousness before God. This is the assurance of our justification before Him. We're confident that the good somehow always outweighs the bad, which prompts our subsequent laundry list of religious qualifiers in these conversations. Things like, I was raised in such and such a church and my grandfather was an evangelist and my uncle was a deacon and my grandmother organized the choir for years. We're a member of Church X across town. We don't go as much as we should, but all the kids were baptized there. But our old pastor left and the new pastor came in and we don't like that pastor as much and so on and so forth. You get the idea. We all have bits and pieces of that same story, I would imagine. But what if I told you Uh, what I rarely have the courage to tell my impromptu confessors in the moment. I usually just nod my head and listen because this kind of conversation usually takes place at a party or at a restaurant or on a sideline at a youth uh, football game or soccer game. Hardly the setting to get too heavy. But if I had the courage, I would say to them something of what Paul the Apostle says to the Philippians, which is this... Your lists of prouds and sorries, while not trivial to your life and history, they don't add up for your salvation. Or put it this way, as Paul himself said, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. When we talk about our spiritual temperature, our tendency is to put the focus on our good achievements, our religious pieties, our moral excellencies, our works of compassion, rather than the excellencies of Jesus Christ, his death for a sinful world and his resurrection triumph for the life of the world. You know, Jesus, whom we call Savior, Jim Rayburn, founder of Young Life, spoke to a gathering of Young Life staff and leaders in 1970, just months before he would succumb to the ravages of cancer. Racked in pain, he shared a message of hope about reaching young people for Christ. And in this message, he said these important words about the heart of young life and its mission and focus and about the fallacy of our own goodness apart from God. He said, quote, young life's an outfit grounded deep down in personal relationship to Jesus Christ and in the belief that not one of us is any good, that every bit of goodness that there is in us was given to us as a gift from God. He made us. If we're good, Jim said, he made us good. If we're good, we got good by getting up close and embracing Jesus Christ. There's no other way to goodness, close quote. So Paul's great anthem in verses 5 through 10 of Philippians 2 points to the absolute epicenter of salvation, of redemption, of forgiveness, the bestowal of life, all authority, power, and majesty. They all belong, and rightfully so, to Jesus Paul says, and being found in human form, he, Jesus, humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, 
even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Close quote. For Paul, who dramatically put his faith in Jesus after encountering, encountering the risen Christ while traveling the road to Damascus to persecute Christians there, For Paul, Jesus is absolutely central, the source of his justification, of his sanctification, and of Paul's eventual glorification. The vision is Jesus, all-encompassing, all-sufficient, a lens through which we can never see ourselves or the world the same. It ended Paul's restless guilt, and it ended his joyless religion, knowing him, trusting him, looking to him, and finding him sufficient in every way. Jesus which sets up Paul's word of caution at the start of Philippians 3 when he says, quote, look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision, Paul says, who worship God by the spirit of the Lord and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, close quote. Whether an imminent or present threat to the believers in Philippi, we don't know. But there were in Paul's day a faction of Jewish Christians, perhaps Gentiles at one point who converted to Judaism and then became believers in Jesus as the Messiah, we don't know, but they were known as the Judaizers and they demanded that Gentile converts to Christianity, they demanded that they adapt the tradition of the Jews to be considered true Christians or completed Christians, especially by receiving the mark of circumcision and by observing other works of the ceremonial law and participating in certain festivals and rituals, etc. In other words, Jesus is great, but if you want to be truly spiritual, add this, add that, and add this, which in the economy of salvation is actually subtraction by addition. This is what Paul means by the works of the flesh. Those are attempts to achieve a righteousness before God with anything other than simple faith in Jesus, specifically the old covenant sign of circumcision. Well, it it became a central issue in the early church regarding the acceptance or the inclusion of the Gentiles into Christian faith. Are they required to be circumcised or not was the debate. In Acts chapter 15, we read about how this issue was resolved among the apostolic community in the first century after Paul and Barnabas uh, brought back word to the leaders of the church in Jerusalem, the Jerusalem Council, of how the Gentiles were receiving the good news of the gospel by grace through faith and were being filled with the Holy Spirit, which was an emphatic sign of God's acceptance or inclusion of these Gentiles. So Peter stands up and he says to them in Acts 15, quote, brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God who knows the heart bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them having cleansed their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus just as they will. Close quote. Remarkable. What's going on here? Peter and Paul and the apostolic community are are recognizing the complete all in all of Jesus Nothing else needed but faith in him, a complete and total redemption through his blood. Which is why Paul is saying to the Philippians, beware, look out, look out for what? Look out for those who say Christ is not enough. Anything outside of faith in Jesus is what Paul describes of as confidence in the flesh. The Jews were sometimes known as the circumcision, the people of God marked by this outward sign of the covenant in the church We may be described in in some ways as the the baptized. But Paul says in verse 3, For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Here is the true mark of God's people, whether Jew or Gentile, rich or poor, black or white, male or female, educated, uneducated, those who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, period, full stop, nothing more, nothing less. But what about my confirmation, we might say? What about my church attendance? What about my years 
helping the altar guild? What about my seminary degrees? What about my help with VBS a few summers ago? What about my time on the finance committee at church? Surely if there's leverage for heaven, it has to come through being on finance committee. What about my family history and heritage? All things that we might be tempted to reach for as Christians and justifying ourselves before God. The Jews were having the same struggle. Paul, a former Pharisee, says that he too has every reason to boast in the flesh. He says, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more, Paul says, circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But listen to what he says, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For His sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. Close quote. Now Paul is not saying that his Jewish heritage is to be despised. Not at all. And we Christians should not despise our spiritual heritage found in the Old Testament as we read it. We too, as Gentiles and believers in Jesus, are the heirs of Abraham. Not by works of the flesh, mind you, but by grace through faith. Not even Abraham back then was justified by works. But Abraham was declared righteous by faith alone, as Paul teaches in Romans. Because he simply believed God's promise. No, what Paul is saying is that compared to the completed work of Christ, compared to the glory revealed in Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, compared to that, there's no comparison. The basis of our righteousness would be ridiculous if I were to boast Jesus plus my Bible study attendance, or to boast Jesus plus the three mission trips I did in my younger days or to boast Bible studies or mission trips or church committee meetings. These don't contribute one iota toward our righteousness. They may be a byproduct of our righteousness, they may be a fruit of our righteousness, but they cannot make me and you righteous. Only Jesus can do that. Now here's the thing, Paul begins this section of his letter by exhorting us to rejoice. He says, finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Paul says, I'm being repetitive, maybe, but it's okay. He says, because this is for you. This is for your safety and, and this is for the safekeeping of your joy. Do you know what the enemy of joy is? The enemy of joy is a performative righteousness, which is a kind of righteousness that is added to or substituted for or in place of Jesus. See, joy is the fruit of the completed work of Christ. And it's the basis of a relief that we spell with a capital R. We see it in the Gospels everywhere Jesus goes and wherever he's received. The result, true joy. The broken, the hurting, the lame, tax collectors, prostitutes, whoever it was, when they encountered Jesus and received him, joy was never far behind. When you know that you're loved unconditionally, when you know you're forgiven eternally, then there's joy. On the other hand, the moment we add that little extra duty, that little extra requirement, our joy is evaporated under the hot sun of suspicion and comparison and fear and jealousy and condemnation, which is what your adversary loves to do most in your life. Getting you to believe the lie that you can contribute to the work that Jesus performed for you, somehow making you acceptable or making you righteous. If he can put you on the treadmill of an alien righteousness, he will. If he can convince you that Jesus' death and resurrection is not quite sufficient for your acceptance and forgiveness before God, he will certainly do it. He'll put you there. If there was one thing that the adversary would like to do to you and to me and to the church and to our families, it's to steal our joy by turning our eyes away from the Savior who always lives up to his title, Savior rescuer. The same caution that Paul brings, the Philippians, is relevant for the church and for me and you today. We're so tempted to doubt the sufficiency of Jesus. We live in a time when the shiny trinkets of lesser gods, the gods who always fail, mind you, the gods that are mirages, 
tempt us and call to us from psychic mediums, New Age incantations, spells, tarot card readings, New Age crystals, astrological sign craft, and horoscopes. They're everywhere, mind you, along with other forms of spiritualities rooted in paganism or creation worship. People who are professed Christians even dabbling with occultic add-ons. Why? Because they don't trust the sufficiency of Jesus. And it's not just these very dangerous idols we every day doubt the sufficiency of Jesus in large part because we get distracted by the stuff of life. Maybe we lose contact with the fellowship in the body of Christ. We get discouraged. We stop meditating on God's word. We pray less and less. We just sort of begin to drift away. We forget who Jesus is, what Jesus has done. We lose confidence. We lose joy. We wonder, am I really loved? How could he love me? I'm such a mess. Paul gives us the cautionary exhortation to keep looking to Jesus. Then these words, he says, Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, Paul says, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, close quote. He says, I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus made me his own. See, Jesus is all you need is not a cliche only. It's a gospel reality. If you feel in yourself that Jesus is not enough, the insufficiency is not with Jesus, it's with me or you. Run to his throne of grace, hurl yourself at his feet and rest in his strong hands and be renewed, be filled with the Spirit and be staggered once again by the beautiful Savior. And brace yourself, brace yourself now for an avalanche of joy because that's what happens when we come to our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Behind me
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Bapa kami yang ada di surga, dimuliakanlah namamu. Father in heaven, santificado sea tu nombre. May your kingdom come soon. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Maplenzi yako ya timuizwa. Hapa duniani kama huko mbinguni. In la tierra como en el cielo. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Datanglah kerajaanmu, jadilah kerajaanmu. El pan de este día. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us today the food we need. Utupe leo riziki yetu. And forgive us our trespasses. At patawarin mo kami sa aming mga sala. Como nosotros perdonamos As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But kill our men, you can see them. Gau our men, to lay hung up. And lead us not into temptation. Na usitutie majaribuni. Lakini utokoe na yule muovu. But deliver us from evil. At huwag mo kami ipahintulot sa tukso. At iadya mo kami sa lahat ng masama. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Kwa kuwa ufalme ni wako, na nguvu, na utukufu, hata milele. Porque tuyo es el reino, el poder, y la gloria, por todos los siglos. Amen. 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 Well, all right, friends, thank you so much for being a part of our online worship experience today from wherever you're connecting, whenever you're connecting with us. We're so excited you've done so. And our prayer for you is simple, the love of Jesus Christ over your life. And if this online experience has been a blessing to you, we want to encourage you, invite you, become a digital missionary, push this link out to a friend, a coworker, colleague, someone from your family, someone all, all the way across the world that you know who could use encouragement and good news today. We really do appreciate that. And we want to invite you, if you're in the Wilmington area and you've not done so yet, we want you to join us for in-person worship. We gather each and every Sunday, 8.30, 10 a.m. Kids ministry going strong all morning long. There's something for everybody here. It's an incredible experience connecting it together on Sunday mornings. Just go to our website, click Sundays. You can plan your visit with us at 9.15. It's community time, coffee, bagels, good friends. Meet somebody new. Have a great conversation with us. Join us in person. We look forward to meeting you and so many other ways to connect with us. We're in the middle of an Alpha series right now. Alpha is happening online. It's the opportunity for anybody to explore the Christian faith in a welcoming, relational atmosphere and you can do this from the comfort of your own home just go to alphawilmington.com if you're asking questions at the intersection of god life faith and you want to explore more about what christianity is and how a relationship with jesus can make a difference in your life then you will love alpha so many other ways to connect we've got groups meeting all across our community we invite you to explore getting connected to a small group and so many other things that we offer just go to our website click the event hub and go to the event hub calendar on our website for more information and finally just want to say thank you for your generosity it's time treasure talent it all comes together to help us make a difference in the lives of others for the sake of his name serving jesus together no greater privilege than that and we want to encourage you invite you to prayerfully consider becoming a sustaining giver with us financially you can learn more about giving at st john's at our website just click the giving button and you'll get all the information about how important it is to be a part of financial giving uh, to support the work and mission here at sjc your love today may the lord build in us hearts of generosity that follow after his generous heart his name is jesus god bless you in your giving today
And that's about it, friends. Be cheerful. Keep things in good repair. Keep your spirits up. Think in harmony. Be agreeable. Do all that. And the God of love and peace will be with you for sure. Greet one another with a holy embrace. All the brothers and sisters here say hello. The amazing grace of the Master, Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. So powerful to think that the death and resurrection of Jesus is the signal of his lordship and the sure and certain signal of his lordship, Jesus raised from the dead, means that he is king, he's sovereign, he's the Lord of all, he is the all in all. Jesus indeed is everything we need, nothing less, nothing more. And that's good news, something for us to think about as we move into the week ahead to pray about, I know I'll join you in that. It's been awesome to connect today. Thank you so much for being with us. We want to stay connected with you moving forward. You can find us anywhere and everywhere on social media at SJCILM. Follow us there. We'll look for you there. We hope to connect with you there. And friends, remember as you go today, Jesus loves you. He gave himself for you and rose triumphantly from the grave for you you. Amazing love, amazing Savior. And remember this also, life is short. We don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So let us be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Until next time, everybody, take care.